Hi, it's Carol Montgomery, and here we are again on a lovely Saturday, and I'm here with Dr. Duncan McCullum, chiropractor, health expert, and award-winning published author. And uh, Dr. McCullum, we have a really uh, interesting show today because we're talking about a topic that's been making the news lately because of uh, a CDC report that came out, as well as uh, Dr. Daniel Pompa did a whole um, call on it also. And that uh, topic is Lyme disease. Yes, very, very interesting disease. And it's uh, really getting its name in the headlights these days because of the epidemic that we're seeing. And the CDC has been recognizing it. I think you're going to talk about that a little bit, right? Yeah, actually, I thought it would be important for um, everyone that's listening today to actually get the data from that CDC report uh, because um, it's been in the news LA Times, a bunch of people have been reporting it, but I actually found a flaw <laughs> in the reporting, um, and it had to do with Lyme disease. So I'm going to just give everyone a little bit of information about it. So this, uh, the latest information that came out about Lyme disease was from the CDC in a report called Vital Signs that they issue uh, once a week. But in particular, this report had to do with a study that they had done over the period of 13 years of 2004 to 2016, um, and where they found that diseases from mosquitoes, flea bites, and tick bites have tripled now to the tune of 640,000 cases reported. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that the tick bites, our topic today, has doubled and that 82% of the tick bite diseases reported are Lyme disease. Yeah, wow, that doesn't surprise me. Now, what's even more interesting is that out of that 640 cases re reported overall, when you break it down, 402,000 of those uh, make, up, make up the area of Lyme disease. Yeah, I, so, I heard that there's something like 300,000 cases a year being yeah. diagnosed yeah. right now. So, the, um, of course, what they say is they're seeing a steady increase in Lyme, and then in particular, they're seeing uh, an expansion in the geographies. Now, we should know that here in California, we're not um, in the, the dark blue states, <laughs> which happen to be the Northeast. Um, we actually are in the lighter blue one. So that's the good news, but it doesn't keep us out of the woods you know, no, no, pun, no intended. pun intended. Okay. But a really interesting thing I wanted to note here is that um, being the wonk that I am sometimes on reading research articles, I actually read the actual report and there was a small footnote, which was interesting to me. So between 2007 and 2008, there was a jump in the report of Lyme diseases by over 10,000. Wow. And that caught my attention and it had a footnote. And the footnote says, and I quote, Lyme disease reporting changed in 2008 to include probable cases in addition to confirmed. Now, I thought that was really odd because none of the other diseases that they were reporting on made that change except the one on Lyme disease. So it begs the question, why? And I obviously don't know the answer because they didn't tell us, but it made me think, well, what is contained in the word probable? Is it symptoms? Is it based on symptoms that are being reported? And so they're similar to Lyme disease, therefore they get into this probable category. So as I went through the symptoms, which you're gonna talk about, mm -hmm. lo and behold, um, having been diagnosed myself with, what, with uh, something that was thought to have been dis Lyme disease, but they weren't sure, and this was a few years ago, as you know, and then they just put me in this general category called autoimmune, but lo and behold, all of the, almost all of the symptoms of Lyme disease are very similar to autoimmune diseases. And that leads me into you. <laughs> that was a not nice long lead in, but I thought it was important. Yeah, it is important. And you know what, I think one of the reasons it's probable is, you know, remember about 15 years ago, nobody believed Lyme disease existed. The CDC yeah. didn't recognize it, the AMA didn't recognize it. Everybody thought you were crazy. And part of the problem is that at the advanced stages of 
Lyme disease that we will get into does affect the brain and it yeah. does cause psychotropic problems. So mm -hmm. that's, um, you know, very, very probable why the um, Lyme disease has been um, overlooked so much. But now we know that it's, it's right here. And by the way, as you know, Carol, about a week and a half ago, I found a tick on me, yes. bored into me, <laughs> scared the heck out of me right at my belt line. I go, I have an itch. And then what's this thing? And I saw the tick and immediately, you know, you knowing it, everything yeah. I know, I yanked it out, which, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> I should have put some, um, some essential oil on it and taken it out. But I did get the head out and everything. And I did do what anybody, if you don't remember anything today, remember this, if you get bit by a tick, don't get rid of it, don't kill it, put it in a plastic bag with a little damp paper towel and send it off to the Sonoma Health Department oh. with your name, the date you found the tick, where you found the tick, and a check for 33 bucks, and they'll test that tick for you and find out if it is if it does have the uh, spirochetes in it or the dangerous Lyme disease. So I'm waiting to find out. Well, so far, you're not suffering from fever, chills, headache, fatigue, muscle joint aches, swollen lymph nodes. Yeah, except for <laughs> nobody on the air can see my facial tics. <laughs> so, so, obviously, then, the first question is, what, what is Lyme disease, and how do you know if you have it? Well, what is Lyme disease? So, Lyme disease is a bacteria that is transmitted by the tick into the body, and there's different stages of it, and the... the, the crazy thing about this little Lyme bacteria, it's called a spirochete, and it's basically a spiro-shaped bacteria that can bore into your body, and it can hide. It's very smart. I never really thought of bacteria as intelligent until I started really studying Lyme disease and the spirochete. This thing, um, which is the bacteria, can hide in your body, and when it sees uh, trouble coming, it will roll itself up into a ball, kind of like a pill bug, and hide. It will go into a cyst form, and it will stay like that for quite a while until it feels like it's safe to come out again. So this is one reason symptoms come and go with Lyme disease. And a lot of people have episodes that um, may seem like a flu. Uh, the, some of the first symptoms within 7 to 14 days are flu-like symptoms. Yeah, that fever and chills. And so you go, oh, I had a little bit of a flu, and then it goes away. And then it comes back and can come back with all kinds of other kinds of problems. But so the... Uh, Lyme disease bacteria has a very simple name, making it really easy to remember. It's called Boreola burgdorferi. So <laughs> try to say that five times fast. So that's how complicated, maybe they named the disease by the complication of the, the bug itself, because it is a complicated little guy. Yeah, I know, and I, it's a, I learned a new word too, spirochete. Yeah. Um, and I remember that by just thinking parochete. Yeah. So everyone can now know, have a few new words today that you learned too. Yeah. And it is, it's, again, it spirals in and it actually bores into the uh, body. It lives in the biofilm of your intestine. So in your intestine, the covering that separates the food that you're putting through, we'll call it food. And then nutrients are absorbed out of that food by the friendly bacteria or the microbiome, which, you know, is a whole show in itself. And those microbiome break down our food, and then that's absorbed through the intestinal wall into our bloodstream and carried to every cell and organ in our body. Um, but in that covering is the spirochete lives in there, not only in the large intestine, but in a lot of other places that we'll go into in a minute. Well, and it's interesting that you should mention that because many people who have Lyme disease, I was on a forum this morning, report digestive issues. Yeah, that's one of the first places. I mean, you know, our digestive system is, um, we've talked about this before, it exists outside of your body. Yeah. So if you were, a, and this is a terrible analogy, but imagine stacking a bunch of donuts up and the hole down the center is your digestive system. Well, the inside of the donut is still covered with the same material as the rest of the donut. It's, so this tube that goes through your body, this feeding tube, exists outside of your actual body. And in that feeding tube live 100 trillion bacteria that digest your food for you and then open the doors of your intestine and put it into your body. So there's a lot of stuff that gets into our digestive system that should never be there. Yeah. And we've talked about some of the foods and toxins and poisons 
that get in our digestive system that break down its ability to actually digest our food. Inflammation occurs and things like these spirochetes get in there as well as other bacteria and it makes us incredibly sick. And so most people today that have Lyme disease um, have quite a bit of knowledge about it because they have to. Yeah. A lot of forums out there, oh, I mean, I, I know a couple people with the disease and they're quite knowledgeable about it. And, and for us today, we really want to talk to people who may be concerned that like they've been exposed to it or maybe have just been diagnosed or are not sure if they have it because they are uh, suffering from autoimmune type uh, symptoms. So um, what are the stages of, of Lyme disease? I think that's important to talk about. Yeah, that's, that's great. And I, uh, I'll talk about that in a second, but I do want to continue on your, your subject there is we're really speaking to the people that have tried everything and still not are not getting well. Right. You've gone to every kind of healthcare provider out there. You've tried every supplement on the market, probably tried antibiotics and maybe a, a lot of medications. And they even put people on psychotropic medication because a spirochete does affect your brain and your psyche when it gets in there. So we want you to become educated in this area to find out if this could be the cause of why you actually aren't getting well. And we'll talk about at the end of the show what we could do about it. But there are three known stages for uh, Lyme disease. And the first one is just mild Lyme disease. This is where you get bit by a, a tick and the all of the um, substances are local. So you have localized bacteria around the area of the tick. Uh, this is why you want to get tested or get the, the uh, tick tested right away, because if it is positive, treating this thing with antibiotics at that point is really the key. And, you know, uh, as a natural care per, uh, doctor, I don't talk about using antibiotics often, but this would be one place to actually do it. So that's just when you have the localized Lyme disease. And you might have some fever, you might have uh, some general malaise, meaning you feel bad, um, maybe some night sweats, you might have some trouble sleeping. Those are some of the simple, um, basic uh, symptoms you'd have. The second stage is called early disseminated Lyme disease. So early disseminated, dissemination means like Johnny Appleseed disseminated um, apple seeds. So this is when the Lyme bacteria is no longer localized and it's starting to get throughout your body. This is where it gets stuck in the mucous membranes. It loves the mouth, by the way. It loves dental caries. It loves to be in root canal areas or um, pockets left by uh, root canals. Um, it lives in for these dark, moist places. It's just like, and they, they bore in there and they're scary. So that's the early stage uh, dissemination. The later stage dissemination is the bad one. This is where it's throughout the body and it's pretty systemic. Your symptoms can be anywhere from you know, brain frog to uh, bipolar type of disorders to joint ache to, it even goes into the heart. There's a cardiac issue um, and lung issue major organs in your body are going to be affected at this stage. It even gets into your brain and it bores into your brain. Yeah, they talk about on the symptom list put out by the CDC, short-term memory loss and, and heart palpitations, mm -hmm. uh, irregular heartbeat. Yeah, and so you can see why somebody might show up with, you know, low blood pressure. Some of the um, co-infections we'll talk about as well, other bacteria or parasites that coexist with the Lyme parasite. The symptoms that you might have, you go to the doctor with high blood pressure, low pr blood pressure, heart palpitations, insomnia, um, anxiety, all of these type of symptoms are being treated um, through the not only Western medicine, but also natural medicine. And if you're not really finding the cause, you're going to be treating that stuff forever. Well, and, and that's what happened to me, although it turned out not to be Lyme disease in the end, but everything that you just mentioned, every single symptom I had, and it went on for years until, you know, I was introduced to the cellular detox. Yeah, you know, it's it's just amazing that that um, this disease is so rampant right now and so many people have no clue that they might be exposed. You might have been bit by a tick 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, well, I spent my early years on a dairy farm, so. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, that's Lots um, of deer around there. Exactly. And and it might lay dormant that long until yeah. 
your immune system gets weak from some other kind of stressor in your life. It might be something emotional. It could be another bacteria or virus that you have. It might be heavy metal exposure, which really the heart of all of this is getting the heavy metals out of your body because they, they open the door for all these parasites and bacteria to hang out. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But really the key to handling this stuff, first of all, is you want to find out what your heavy metal load is and you want to get, you know, the proper handling. Right, right. And you were talking about some of these, uh, co what are called, what are they called, co-infections? Yeah, co-infections, there's several of them. Um, the, the number one, like 30% of the people that do have Lyme disease also have a co-infection called Babesia. Babesia is actually a parasite that goes along with Lyme disease. Now, remember, Lyme can stay in the body in, it's, it will take, it's an opportunistic bug. So it's going to find weak areas of the body that can't fight it off. So it's going to, again, hide in the little um, pockets in the intestines and in the, the dental caries in your mouth and some of your organs and some of your muscles. And then it opens the door for these other things to come live with them. Heavy metals actually open the door. They make the bed for parasites bacteria, molds, and chemicals to hang out in. They're just, they, they're welcoming these things to come hang out because of the environment they create. But Babesia, being a parasite, actually lives in the red blood cells. So it attacks the red blood cells and it will float around in your body and make your blood, it could actually lower your blood pressure. So if you have unusually low blood pressure and you have all these other symptoms, then you want to look for a co-infection. And, and this also is can go, as long as it's mild, it may not be bad, but it especially hurts people with uh, who maybe lost their spleen from an accident. Um, they have a lowered immune system already or the elderly. So, you know, it's really uh, can be a very dangerous co-infection if it's not found and caught early. The other one is called Bartonella. And this is actually a bacteria that lives in the lining of your blood vessels. So again, this coexists with Lyme, but it will get in the blood vessels and in the biofilm, the inside layer of the blood vessels, it can house itself in there and it can cause all kinds of problems. I, yeah, have you ever heard of cat scratch fever? No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a disease that we hear about. And um, usually it can be transmitted from cats, this, oh, this wow. Bartonella, but also it does um, kind of find itself in the, the same a neighborhood as the Lyme disease. So those are two. There's a lot more, and they don't even can't even really test that well for Bart or for Babesia because there's like they think there's 30 strains of it that they know about, and there might be some they don't even know about. So the, the testing is so incredibly difficult. You have to get the RNA. You have to look for the you know the RNA, which is you know just beyond the pale. So the main thing is you got symptoms. There's ways to get your body healthy and that's what you really need to focus on. You can spend a lifetime trying to diagnose it, but really the key is without the correct diagnosis available right now, just treat the, treat the problem. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, some of the things that um, we want to talk about too is we know now that the, um, the spirochete actually can get into the brain and it bores deep into the brain and it can affect the um, your your memory it can affect Alzheimer's and, and create even bigger problems with it. So um, I think at this point uh, we want to really talk about the autoimmune diseases that we're seeing. Like some of the other ones that we see along with this is Epstein Barr. You know Epstein Barr, and I think you've had some experience with that. These are some of the other diseases that can mimic Lyme disease or my, Lyme disease can mimic these. Yeah, and that's what's so confusing about this whole area um, is that you do have this mimicking going on. I mean, I'm just sitting here listening to this going, oh my God, here we are, 2018. <laughs> and we really, for us to survive daily on this planet, there, there is so much more that we need to be aware of than just taking vitamin C. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the more information that I that I learn about what potentially I could have been exposed to this this life, what my parents gave me through in utero, and the list goes on and on, 
And now I've just come to, to believe that if you're diagnosed with autoimmune, the real diagnosis is, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, it's really a diagnosis where there's an admission in that, right. that from the doctor, whomever, I really don't know. So I'm going to put you in this category called autoimmune because autoimmune and all those symptoms that um, I had, others I know had, our patients have had that are going through the detox, they could be all these other things. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just to, to define autoimmune for those of you who may not know what yeah, we're talking good, about, good point, yeah. auto means self and immune, of course, your immune system is what's supposed to protect you. So autoimmune means your body is fighting itself. Sometimes people have autoimmune thyroid disease where your body sees your thyroid gland as the enemy and it starts to destroy it. And um, this, a lot of people are treated for the, the autoimmune thyroiditis and it may be one of the later symptoms of a deeper caused issue and it probably is. Yeah. And when we're looking at things like rheumatoid arthritis, um, all of this stuff really, when these diseases take um, hold here, you really want to look upstream. You want right, to look at right. the cell. The cell is the only living part of your body. And it really comes down to what we've known for a long, long time. It really comes down to the immune system, doesn't it? Uh, that Because the war is between the immune system and, and these toxins and chemicals and bacterium and viruses that are attacking it. And and so the because of that, our immune system gets degraded. So this new science that, that we're dealing with today in terms of cellular detox is so, so important because it really is the, the, the preparatory stage, if you will, to, we're not saying that we can cure anything like Lyme disease, but to manage it, to get to a point where you can manage it and get back to living um, what you consider to be a normal life. Yeah, you know, the question, um, I've seen the question asked several times and there's no clear answer. Can you cure Lyme disease? Well, they say if you catch it early enough, yes. But mm -hmm. other than that, it might be a lifetime of managing it. So one of the things that we specialize in when we work with people is we specialize in, in teaching you what you need to do, do in order to stay healthy for a lifetime because you don't want to be dependent on somebody like us forever, but we might need to help you get over the hump. Right. But when you look at the immune system and you look at the cell, if you can imagine blowing those little soap bubbles that kids used to blow, and maybe you still do just for fun. <laughs> Big ones. <laughs> yeah. When you first blow them, they're, they are beautiful, and they have this rainbow that you can see in them. And then they kind of float around, and you slowly see them start to disintegrate. And then they go, and they disappear. Well, that's imagine that to being the cell wall of every cell in your body. Now, all your organs are made up of cells. Your brain's made up of cells everything that's alive in your body has a cell wall to it. And the biggest issue we have is we're being invaded by so many um, chemical substances. I think since uh, the Industrial Revolution, there's been over 100,000 man-made chemicals dumped into our environment. And um, some of them might take years and years to make. But just imagine, as soon as that gets into your body, your liver has to figure out how to detoxify that yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, how incredible is our body that it can take a new chemical that took man years to make and it can detoxify it in a heartbeat. The problem is that after a while, because of the foods we eat, like all the sugar that we've grown up with, the uh, gluten-y foods, the, the flours and the processed food that has 13,000 additives in it that the FDA allows, and... Um, all of the chemicals that they put in the processing and growing of the foods, whether it's a herbicide or, you know, fertilizers, some of these substances finally plug our body, and especially when we're under stress and when we take a lot of, uh, of um, drugs, if we've had to take pharmaceutical drugs or others, and um, we might drink or smoke or do those types of things, eventually our body gets plugged up. So the detox pathways in our body, your, your liver, which goes to your colon, your kidneys that go to your bladder, your skin and your lungs, those are the four major detox pathways. They eventually get plugged and therein lies the problem. People try to detoxify their body. 
They might do a cleanse, they might do an enema, they might do a, something that they got off the shelf for 10 days, they're all okay. But if you don't open up the detox pathways down below, you're never gonna, you're never gonna get well. Yeah. Do we wanna take a short commercial break yeah. here? Are you gonna talk or? Yeah. Okay. Hey, let me say? run I'll this for a little, give yourself a rest here for 20 seconds. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I guess the call didn't come in. That's yeah, so. all right. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I wanted to bring your attention to a great organization in our community. You're probably all aware of it. Jacob's Heart Children's Cancer um, Organization. And uh, these guys are out there saving lives and taking care of the families of these devastated um, individuals. And um, I want to let you know that we love to support Jacob's Heart. In fact, this Saturday at my office, McCollum Family Chiropractic in Capitola, we're putting on uh, what's called a Community Appreciation Day. It's actually my fifth year anniversary at being at Brown Ranch. So we're putting on a birthday event. But in celebration of Jacob's Heart, we're going to ask you to donate $20 to Jacob's Heart, minimum of $20. And for that, you'll receive up to $579 worth of introductory services at our office. So that's a consultation, examination, any needed digital x-rays. And also, if you mention this radio show, we will do some of the toxicity um, evaluations that we're going to talk about in a minute in the office. So this is going to be on May 19th from 8 to 2. And uh, we'd love to have you come. You can donate here at our office. You can call up Jacob's Heart and just say, hey, we want to make a donation um, in the name of McCollum Family Chiropractic, or you can just make a donation. But the main thing is if you're suffering out there, if you know anybody that's just not doing well, whether it's a physical problem, headaches, back pain, low back pain, fatigue, any of that stuff, or if you're curious about what we're talking about here, your donation will get you a consultation examination in our office. And we'd love to have you there. It's uh, Our number is 459-9990. And uh, that's McCollum Family Chiropractic in the Brown Ranch Shopping Center there in Capitola, right across from the mall, this May 19th. And then call 459-9990 and set up an appointment. We'd love to have you there. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so okay, that's going to give you as much time as you want to reload here and talk about what's coming up. I got about 50 seconds of, okay. to run on this. So I think we just go into cellular healing and okay. what we've talked about before and what we know so well, unless you want to recap. Yeah, I'll recap. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start with you. Let me just, I just want to talk about the music first. Oh. Okay. Hey everybody, we're back and I wanted just to put your attention on that wonderful music we were listening to by the late Smith Dobson and his wife Gail singing about their wonderful daughter Sasha Dobson who's an amazing musician herself living in New York and uh, she's just putting out some great stuff. You can find Sasha Dobson, Dobson online but uh, Smith was a wonderful friend of mine and I'm so happy to be able to put his music out here. Great then, so we're going to do the infamous recap, actually, one of our patients said to me the other day, oh, you're the recap lady from KSL. <laughs> That's my role here, folks, recapping. So we started out with um, an overview of the latest C2C, CDC report that they put out. Specifically, uh, this one had to do with uh, various diseases caused by insects. Um, and then it got into Lyme disease and... Um, I gave some of the stats from that and some of the, uh, one of the questions that led us to talk about autoimmune because they have a footnote in there that um, they're now including pro probable Lyme disease with the known Lyme diseases, which I thought was interesting. But uh, we explained that that most likely, as you said, has to do with the fact that the symptoms can be so similar. Yeah. Right? And then uh, you got into talking about the uh, Lyme disease itself, the stages of Lyme disease, the bacteria, uh, the spirochete bacteria, mm -hmm. spiro, spiral little guy, yeah. who bores into 
uh, cells and tissues of the body. And then that it also has uh, family members that uh, come to visit once in a while to other uh, co-infections of other bacteria that come along that it opens the door and welcomes them in and they can wreak additional havoc um, on our, our organs. Um, and then we went from there into the fact of the immune system it all comes down to the immune system yeah absolutely. and it all comes lots of things that people all over the place do to make themselves healthier but as we've discovered even with all of that many people walk through our door and the uh, dr daniel pompa's network that we're members of we talk to lots of other practitioners who see clients and patients too that have walked in the door and said you know what i've done all this stuff medical doctors alternative whatever and i still don't feel well and we now know and it's backed up by clinical trials and real science that that really comes down to the health of the cells and how toxic are you yeah the toxins absolutely. that are bombarding us yeah absolutely and you know i mean there's definitely other things that can get you you know you could get hit by a truck but when it comes down to something in your body that isn't healing you really need to look at the at the cells and inside the cell, you have DNA. Yeah. And DNA is going to dictate what's going on, whether you have blue eyes, brown eyes, white hair, blonde hair, you know, um, how many fingers you have, how many toes. And it also, in the genes that make that up, there are um, genes for cancer. We know that there's seven genes for Alzheimer's. There's several genes for rheumatoid arthritis. And then... Um, all these autoimmune diseases, they have triggers. And when those things are switched on, it's like a light switch. That switch can go on. You know, we've had a couple patients whose mother had rheumatoid arthritis. She's uh, 90 years old, I think, still kicking, but in terrible shape. Both of her daughters did not get rheumatoid arthritis until they were in their 50s. Mm. How come that got turned on? And how come it, and how come some never gets turned on? We know that 5% of, gen of the genetic problems that you might have are the genes themselves, and 95% is the environment. It's what's being put into your body, what you're exposed to, mentally, chemically, and physically. So we talked briefly about the cell wall. The cell wall, um, according to Bruce Lipton, an amazing scientist, said, he says that the cell wall is the smartest part of our body. It's almost like the most brilliant brain we have because it has millions and millions of doors on it specific to only let in one particular hormone. Like we have 40 million uh, estrogen um, doors or receptors on one, every cell. Wow. 40 million just for estrogen. It's Nothing hard else to visualize. Can get in, yeah. You know? And so, um, and then insulin. Think about insulin and sugar. Insulin um, opens the sliding glass door in the cell wall to let a sugar molecule in. Sugar gets into the cell and it gets to this power plant like Moss Landing. It just happens to be called the mitochondria. Goes into the mitochondria and boom, power's made, just like your carburetor. Just like your carburetor and your car, exhaust comes out of, as a result. That exhaust has to get out of the cell. If that exhaust can't get out of the cell, you're in trouble. So here's what happens. We all have heard of diabetes, I'm sure, and maybe if you've heard of that, you've heard of something called insulin resistance. This means that one insulin molecule can no longer open up the sliding glass door to let that sugar molecule in the sliding glass door gets sticky and rusty. So insulin asks for three other insulins to come try to open the door. They get that door open and then that sugar gets in. Pretty soon the cell walls are so swollen and so mucked up from heavy metals, from molds, from biochemicals, uh, free radicals floating around in our body that your pancreas, which is the organ that makes insulin, can't keep up with the demand. It's not that it's not making enough because you have too much insulin in your blood called hyperinsulinemia, I mean too much insulin in the blood. So you go to uh, some kind of healthcare professional and they give you more insulin, synthetic insulin, to try to force that door open to get the sugar in there. You see the problem is the cell wall has become so desensitized that nothing can get in. So here's the million dollar question. If insulin can't get in the cell, do you think estrogen can get in the cell? Do you think 
testosterone, progesterone, thyroid hormone can get in the cell. If you have any problem with insulin getting in your cells, every other hormone in your body can't get in the cells. When you're 40 in the old days, being last century, <laughs> they would give any woman over 40 years old yeah. estrogen. They'd yeah, say, okay, you're 40, here's your estrogen. They never tested to see if you had too much estrogen, just enough or too little, but they were giving pregnant, whores, pregnant mares urine estrogen called Primarin. And, um, you know, we found out that the women with too much estrogen, they just went over the top with that. So my point is, it isn't necessarily that you don't have enough hormones in your body. It's that the cells can't read them. Right. It's like, you know, when I was 45, all of a sudden I needed to wear glasses. I still had books and words in front of me. I couldn't read them anymore. You know, it didn't mean that I just couldn't read. I just needed better glasses. I needed to get my eyes more sensitive or more sharp to recognize the words. Right. So we got to get the cell walls cleaned up. And the proof is in is in the detox itself because we see this um, every day where we have patients who have gone through it um, and, and well I'm thinking of estrogen being a woman and the hormone problems because a lot of our patients are women um, coming out the other side and all of a sudden not needing to take their bioidenticals anymore the hormones have have adjusted inside the body because now the cell wall is less inflamed and and hormones are able to get in and the body makes a, its own natural adjustment to the amount that's there. We see that, we see the same with, with insulin. People's um, insulin levels start to, to um, balance out a little bit. They don't need as much insulin or whatever. They're feeling better, the energy goes up. So the validation is something that, uh, that we see every day in terms of the cell wall just ne really, really needing um, to heal. Yeah, and uh, you know the funny thing is, if you think about a burden, let's say you know you're you're carrying a backpack, and all of a sudden you think, "Gee, I need some more firewood." So you put firewood in that backpack. Oh, I need some base rock. You put base rock in that backpack, and then you put some nails and some tools in that backpack, and then five gallons of water. You're burdening trying to carry that backpack. So kind of the way we're handling health in this area. In our country is every time you have an issue you adding adding another burden to the body to try to push force the cell to be able to recognize the the um, hormone or the vitamin or mineral you're trying to put in there so the other issue is just fix the cell yeah and for the because our topic today is is Lyme disease um, the reason we are even talking about the cellular detox and bringing it this up is because Lyme disease is so vicious and does so much damage and, and how people exist today with it is, is it's hard to understand because the disease is complicated and these symptoms are so vicious. But if you can get the toxins, that toxic load down, then your ability to be able to manage something like Lyme disease and maybe start starting to feel better, at least to a point where you have a normal day, is is much, you have a much better opportunity of getting to that. Yeah, and really, you know, think about it. It's just a mathematical equation. You know, everybody comes into this life with a bucket. We get that bucket from our mother. Right. Okay. And we know that heavy metals like lead and mercury come down through our mother's blood for generations. So your great-great-grandmother could have worked around lead and had a lot of lead. And when she had her daughter, she broke down the, the bones in her body to get calcium to the baby, to the infant. With those that calcium and all that other stuff comes the stored um, heavy metals like lead and mercury and other toxic substances. We even know, by the way, that some of these, um, some of these uh, co-infections can actually come through the, like the Babesia and the Barto, um, Bartonella. Bartonella can actually come through the blood brain barrier, excuse me, come through the mother's placenta as well, the mother's blood through the placenta. So anyway, you're born with a bucket. Some buckets are big, some buckets are small. Through life, those buckets are filled up with toxins. Um, they're um, complicated by disease and environmental stresses that you have. Once that bucket overflows, you get symptoms.
People with huge buckets may never have any symptoms, but people that were just born with smaller buckets and they have a bigger toxicity level for a mother, maybe they've had a lot of uh, flu shots or vaccines, or maybe they've been exposed to toxics in the environment because they live next to a coal factory or something like that. This is where you get sick. So part of getting you well, if you have something like Lyme disease, is to clean out the bucket. And cleaning out the bucket means you got to get Number one, you want to remove yourself from a source of continued toxicity. So it might be a work environment, might be a moldy home, who knows what. But you've got to check with somebody who knows what to look for, and let's get you so you're not being constantly re-exposed. Right. So the, the thing for people to, to, to think about is we know today, right, right now, with all the science that's out there, that everyone has a bucket. Yeah. Everyone today, whether it's our, one of our children or it's those of us that are 40 plus, 55 plus in this Good case, stop there. right? that we all have a bucket and that bucket has toxins in it to one degree or another. So if you have a bucket that happens to have a high to highest load and now you have a tick bite that has a this Lyme bacteria in it and you get Lyme disease on top of a body that has quietly been trying to deal with these toxins. Just think about what that can possibly do. They feed off of each other. One magnifies the other. I mean, we know that one of the symptoms of Lyme disease is brain fog. Well, it's also one of the symptoms of, of um, heavy metal toxicity. Yeah. So now you've got two things going on that, and, and you can't remember where the keys were, where the wallet went, where your husband went, <laughs> it's just, which might be a good thing. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's just really important for people to understand that you have a bucket. So whether you have Lyme disease or not, whether you think you have Lyme disease or autoimmune or you've been exposed, it's so important to at least get the, get the data, get a consultation, fill out a toxicity questionnaire, get tested, so you can ad address the bucket and know where that bucket is in terms of the amount of toxins that are in it. Yeah, and one of the things that we recommend, uh, depending on the individual, but a lot of times we're, we're gonna have you do a heavy metal test. Yes. And we're not just a hair analysis or um, you know, a, a basic urine test or blood test because we need to get and find out where the heavy metals are deep down in your body. And we call it a provoked test. We have you take a substance that actually provokes or digs up some of these toxins. Imagine if you had a, a pond in your backyard and right in the center of the top is this pristine clear water. If you tested that for, for anything, it would probably be perfectly clean. But if you put a mixer in there and you mixed up all of the mud and yuck on the bottom and you tested that, you'd be surprised. You wouldn't ever want to swim or drink out of that. So. Um, when we do the heavy metal test, that's going to help us find out why you're not getting well. Because you got to get to the core. You have to get these out. Because we're talking about the cell. Uh, one point I want to make, and this is kind of graphic, but if I had, if I'm driving down the road, and I have an exhaust a, a, a hose in my exhaust pipe, and I bring it around and put it in the cab of my car, roll up the window. Um, and I'm driving along, I'm getting somewhere, I'm getting using energy and I'm moving, but all of those chemical toxins are getting inside the cab and making me sick. Well, when your cell walls are so weak and rusted, so to speak, and you do get sugar in there, and it does make energy, and the toxins don't get out of there, it's just like having the exhaust in your car. Those bad toxins inside your cells turn on bad genes. They're gonna flip the switch on these terrible genes from cancer to Alzheimer's, to uh, any kind of the arthritis, all of these different things. So we've got to fix a cell to get well. We've got to get the, the cell wall healthy. Uh, Dr. Pompa, uh, Daniel Pompa is leading the way in this. He's a world leader. Carol and I just got back from the symposium of World Symposium on Cellular Healing. And it is amazing information. Even the man who won the 2016 Nobel Prize, Dr. Yushinori Asumi, that's almost as easy to say as wow. that uh, other name for uh, Lyme disease that I'm not going to attempt right now. <laughs> but Dr. Asumi won the Nobel Prize for a word called autophagy, autophagy. Auto means cell, phagy, eating. Now we talked about 
autoimmune. It's the same auto, but autophagy means the body's going to break down and eat the weak and tired cells in your bodies and the invading cells in your body before it eats any of the healthy cells. It spares the healthy cells and destroys the weak cells. So part of our program would involve various, uh, it's a multi-therapeutic approach where we're going to help your body break down the weak cells and make good new cells. Again, number one, we've got to stop the exposure. We've got to repair the cell wall because we want it to get strong enough to give you cell energy. We've got to restore the cellular energy itself. And that takes, you know, uh, an understanding of how to get those little power plants healthy again and rebuild them. The mitochondria. Um, mitochondria are amazing. They're, they're the little power plants in our cells. Your heart cells are made up of 70% That's mitochondria. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Your stomach cells are about 5% probably. <laughs> Um, muscle cells are 20%, but when you take cholesterol medication, for instance, it breaks down the mitochondria because it depletes the heart cells from something called coenzyme Q10. A little bit off to topic, but we're talking about the energy in the cell. So you can't be taking things that are destroying the cell energy because you can't get well right. if you don't have the cellular energy to do it. And you know, um, to go off topic but not really one of the tools that we use in the program is is fasting uh -huh. and i was uh, on this line forum um this morning and there were people talking about fasting and comments being made well i've tried this don't others saying don't don't attempt fasting if you have lyme disease and we should mention that that fasting has all different there's all different types of fasting and ways to do it um, and we are not proponents of somebody jumping into fasting who has Lyme disease and going full bore. That's, that's not what this is about. Therapeutic fasting, um, which I noticed that some people in this form are actually doing and having success, success with, that's the fasting that we introduced people to in our program, starting with intermittent fasting. So it was interesting to me that um, if you look at the fact that someone with Lyme disease also will have a level of toxicity in the body separate from the Lyme disease. And then you put some of these ther therapeutic tools that we use into the mix. In, in, in fact, it's similar to um, people that we know that have weight loss resistance and, um, or, and try to do uh, fasting or the keto diet and are not successful. It's because of that high toxicity level that first you have to get the toxins down yeah. and then you can start putting in these wonderful tools such as fasting um, to help alleviate a lot of the symptoms of diseases such as Lyme. Yeah. So, you know, um, we're, we only have a little bit of time here. I want to let you know if you have any interest in finding more about this subject, Wednesday night, no, Thursday night, the 17th, uh, we will be doing a workshop at my office. Oh, okay. <laughs> News to me. Great, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be six to seven, and we're going to go over different components of Lyme disease and autoimmune disease. Uh, maybe you don't have Lyme disease, but maybe you have such autoimmune issues or you just don't feel well and you've tried everything and you're not getting well. Then come Wednesday, Thursday night to our office, 3555 Claire's right next to Rabobank, and in the, in the uh, Brown Ranch marketing pl Marketplace, our number is 459-9990. Call up and make an appointment to come to that uh, 6 o'clock meeting, and we'll try to give you as much information as we can and let you walk away with some tools that you can use. Yeah, and if you're not able to come on, on Thursday night, um, join us, please, on May 19th for the Community Appreciation Day. Or just walk in the door one day if you're com if you come by, uh, mention um, our, our radio show or that you heard um, about Community Appreciation Day or anything else, and just just stop in, make an appointment, free consultation, and uh, let us set you up with some testing and get you on that road to feeling better. Yeah, and again, um, I'm Dr. Duncan McCollum, and this is Carol Montgomery, and we host this uh, show on stepping in the second. Saturday of every month. Every and we're year, very, yeah. very thankful for uh, Michael's Whirling to have this type of forum that we could do this. Yeah, it's it's awesome. just amazing. And, and Billy's here uh, running the show for us. He's an awesome guy if you haven't known Billy. So um, again, if you feel like you, you're having some kind of autoimmune issues, uh, if you've got some kind of 
problem that you just can't get solved. If you've tried everything, look at the cell. You gotta fix the cell to get well. Dr. Pompa, Dr. Daniel Pompa, who is the world uh, expert on cellular healing, is a guy that we work with weekly. And yeah. there's probably yeah, awesome. 40 doctors around the country and the, maybe the world. That yeah, work. you're one of two in all of California, all, all of Northern California. Yeah, so this is <laughs> so, so new, that, yeah. but, the, but it's coming from the top science. It's, top, yeah. it's coming from uh, guys from MIT and guys winning the Nobel Prizes. And I mean, it's amazing. So we really would love to have you take part in it. Just so, remember, fix the cell to get well. Yeah. And um, I think the, the last thing I want to do is, again, just make a mention of Jacob's Heart. This community uh, organization has been uh, working in this area for so long, helping children uh, with cancer and the families of children with cancer. And they would love your support. You can call them and uh, make a donation to them. Um, or you can make a donation at our office to Jacob's Heart. And then you will receive uh, all of the initial services at our office. It's about $579 worth of consultation exam. We have digital x-ray there, very clear. We will do a neurotoxic evaluation on you. And if you mention that you heard us on this show, there are two other tests that we will perform. One is called the meta-oxy test, and it's a urine test that actually is going to look for the um, oxidation. It's going to look and see how free radicals are affecting the cells on your body. So this is a really a, tell t a very telling test. And another one is going to be a visual test that um, is put together by Dr. Shoemaker, the, the world leader in mold toxicity. And it is a test that looks at the optic nerve. The optic nerve is your eyes, obviously. The best way to assess what's going on in your brain is by assessing a nerve that goes directly to your brain. So. We are so happy to be here. We'll see you next month. I'm not sure what our topic will be, but I yeah. guarantee it will be a lot of fun. And thank you all for listening. We hope you've learned some new things today because that's why we're here. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was trying to cut you off getting into the test because it takes people thinking about something new and different and off of yeah, we just, you had ended yeah. with a commercial and we just... Uh, yeah, you're right. I'll tell you what, man. I don't want to know if I have Lyme disease or not. <laughs> yeah. Honest to God. I know. You know? Yeah. You just go, whoa. That's man. why I said that. My, my sister has a friend who had to get divorced from her husband because the Lyme disease just affected him so badly that wow. she had to get her kids away from him. Yeah. Wow. He was, yeah. he went into a mental breakdown. Yeah. Well, had it for 10 years. Well, we're, we're working we finally to help got that. him diagnosed as with Lyme disease, right. so they gave him the, some particular chemical, I guess, they can give you.